Is it possible to defeat the radar stealth technology? Popular culture says no, but there are reasons to believe otherwise. Welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. If you have watched the previous videos in this series, you already know that radar stealth is a technology that reduces the intensity of the reflection of the electromagnetic radiation from a plane by coating it with radar absorbing materials or by reflecting the radiation away from the radar by the peculiar shape of the plane. <laughs> doesn't guarantee invisibility and its effectiveness depends from the aircraft's attitude in respect to the radar. All of this just for a range of the possible frequencies that can be used by different types of radar. So, stealth is a very useful technology that creates problems to the radars that try to get a track, but it is not invincible and it can be defeated. There is a radar famous document from the Israeli Air Force uh, dated 2018 in which it is said that stealth is going to be an advantage for the next five years. They are well aware that for any action there is a reaction and the reaction to stealth is coming. To fully understand how stealth can be defeated, we have to understand that the radar is not the only sensor available to fighters and air defenses. Passive sensors that can receive the radar emissions are increasingly common on fighters and uh, in ground-based defenses. Actually, any kind of emission, radar, radio, data links, can be intercepted, usually at a distance far superior than the useful range of the emission. At the short end of the electromagnetic spectrum, infrared search and track sensors are also becoming increasingly common. They are passive and they can track the heat emitted by the plane or the missiles, uh, obviously without being spotted, but unless the other planes have an infrared search and track as well. The range at which they can identify a target in ideal condition it is about half than that of the average radar. When the F-22 first took part to the red flag exercises it had a resounding success even against the top-of-the-line F-15s. Pilots reported that they simply couldn't spot it, so they were taken by surprise by uh, the long-range missiles and the shutdown, obviously in the simulation, before they could really react. This is how stealth, at least in the American version, is supposed to work. And indeed, when it works, it is devastating. A few years later, fighting Eurofighters and Rafales in simulated exercises, the F-22 supremacy was not so clear, because new tactics allowed even non stealth airplanes to put themselves in a situation to partially negate the advantages of stealth. How this could happen? Well, there are two elements to counter stealth, technology and tactics. Since stealth works for the most part by redirecting the reflected energy away from the emitter, one solution is locating the radar receiver somewhere else and possibly having more than one. This seems a bit outlandish for us, but the first radars in the late 30s actually worked in this way. At the time, it was a technology limitation. Today, the most advanced integrated air defenses pull together the resources to try uh, obtaining a clear picture of the airspace. Russia, China and other countries are constantly developing and refining this capability, networking their radars and other sensors together. Since stealth is effective in a limited range of frequencies, then other frequencies might be used to detect stealth targets. It is not widely known, but Often, civilian air traffic control radars, which work at lower frequencies than military radars, can detect stealth planes, at least those of the smallest size. Russia and China have both developed VHF radars for the same purpose. However, the problem is that the lower the frequency, 
the larger the error. The position of the target cannot be determined with an error small enough to launch a weapon against it. As we have seen in a previous video, this error may be kilometers. Sometimes this is not seen as a problem because it is often explained that if a target can be engaged, it doesn't really matter if it is visible. We will see that this may not be true. Every kind of emission, either thermal or electromagnetic, can potentially compromise stealth. Electronics surveillance measures are more and more common and their capability to discriminate and precisely locate the emitter is constantly increasing. The F-35 is very, very good at this. A stealth plane emits electromagnetic radiation from the radar, the data link, the radios, the weapons guidance systems and the electronic countermeasures. The same plane has an infrared signature caused by the engine nozzle and the exhaust plume, uh, the aerodynamic friction on the front edges and the launch of weapons with an engine, which in turn they have an engine, a nozzle and a plume. It is normal practice to fly under emission control rules to limit the radiation. Modern LPI radars may be very difficult to detect, particularly in the scan mode, and some data links are heavily directional, so no emissions in theory can be detected by the NAB. Not much can be done to reduce the infrared signature and the pilot needs to learn how to manage it. In the same way, it must be trained on how to get the most out of the stealth features. So, since there are technology which can locate a stealth target, how can these be used by a defender who is trying to stop a stealth attacker? Well, we could do various scenarios, but all of them rely on the idea of forcing the stealth plane to do something that gives up its stealthiness. For example, if a stealth attack is spotted by a low-frequency radar, while well, some fighter may be directed toward the approximate position or a barrage of long-range missiles can be fired against it. The target can't simply ignore them and it could be more than enough for a mission kill, that is, the target aborts the mission to preserve its own integrity. In this case, if a target starts maneuvering, its stealthiness is compromised even more and finally there is the possibility to acquire, at least for a short period of time, a track. Actually, it seems that the Russian approach to the problem is actually launching salvos of long-range missiles with different guidance, radar active uh, infrared hormone jam, even if a precise track has not been acquired yet. This increases the probability of a hit, but also may force the stealth target to react, either maneuvering or start emitting, allowing for a better fix on it. The second salvo has much better chances to hit the target. A similar situation may happen if some fighters are used as a bait and having the stealth incursion react to their presence, again giving up part of their stealthiness. Even the launch of a missile can give a sufficient hint to direct a fighter to get close enough to the stealth plane. And when the distance is close enough, radars can acquire the stealth target and the passive sensor can actively complement it. Also, if the stealth fighter is maneuvering in close combat, it has lost all the stealth advantage. In a defensive situation, stealth fighter defending an airspace could be more difficult to identify. With proper tactics and LPI radars, stealth planes can sneak upon the attacker and take a very safe shot with a medium-range missile. At that point, they may be noticed and chased, but they have already executed the mission. The situation may not be so favorable to the stealth plane if the engagement rules mandate for visual identification or attackers' ECM are negating the automated target recognition. However, the interaction with a complex environment with a lot of different assets working in coordination like airborne radars or electronic warfare planes may lead to unpredictable situations. And this may happen particularly in an advanced environment among near-peer opponents and where there is really the possibility of unexpected situations to happen. It is clear that stealth is a very important feature, but it doesn't guarantee success in itself. It 
is just an important element that participates to the operation's overall outcome. While a stealth plane might have a decisive advantage against an isolated no-stealth plane, this advantage may be less important in a complex and integrated environment. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.